Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, I've got a dirty gun here. This is a Colt Mark IV Series 70 government model of recent manufacture. I have fired about 100 rounds through it, so it's not super dirty, but I figured I would give it a cleaning, and I figured I'd show you guys while I did it. Many of you who are watching this will be familiar with the 1911. This is a 1911. And many of you will be familiar with how to clean it, how to take it apart, field strip it, all that good stuff. But I figured it's always fun to refresh. Some people just like these kinds of videos anyway. So why not throw one on the channel here? So here we go. This is our Colt. Beautiful weapon. Love it. Quite fantastic. How do we take this apart? Well, here we go. Some people will put the safety on. The first thing you got to do though is check, make sure there's no ammunition in the weapon whatsoever. We'll put this to the side. Um, I can't remember if I actually used this magazine while I was firing it. Usually I don't really do much to the magazines. I might just clean the feed lips a little bit. I'm not seeing any residue on there really, so I think that's fine. We'll leave that as it is. So there is nothing in the weapon. It is clear, it is safe, it is clean. Don't have any ammunition around you while you're cleaning either. Just keep it entirely away in a different room just to be on the safe side. So some people will put the safety on. They'll put the gun down on the ground like so, and you push down on this plug here for the recoil spring, and then you rotate the barrel bushing counterclockwise like so. That releases the pressure on the spring and then your slide is basically loose. You can take off the safety. Now there's a little notch here. Can you see that right by the slide release or the slide stop, whatever you want to call it? And we need to line that up with, let's see if I can do this through. So we're lining that up just like so. And then from the other side of the frame, oh, there goes my recoil spring plug. You press this in, and if you have it lined up correctly, looks like it's gotten a little bit out of alignment now, you can simply yeah, pull the slide stop lever away. There we go. Where's my camera? It's right there. So now everything is unlocked. And the slide comes out like so. You've got your frame here, you slide here, you can take out the recoil spring, there's the guide rod. I don't have a full guide rod on this. Pop that off the spring if you wish. Put that to the side. And the barrel, as you can see here, can't come out of the slide until you take the barrel bushing and then rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise now. And that just pops out like so. Put that aside and then the barrel will come out the front. like so. So we'll put that aside as well. So that's basically the field stripping that you need to do for a basic cleaning. What I start with is usually I take some ballastol like this and let me get these things out of the way here. I will take these little pieces here, especially the barrel, and I will just douse it. Douse it down with ballastol. This can is getting empty by the way. I'm gonna have to buy some more here pretty soon. I will just completely douse the inside of the barrel from both directions. The entire outside of the barrel, the link here, and I will just put this to the side and let it soak for most of the time while I'm actually cleaning the rest of the weapon. I'll just spray down the guide rod. It's not gonna hurt it. You're gonna wipe most of this off later anyway, and the ballastol kind of puts a little coating on the metal pieces, sort of like um, if you use a cast iron pan and you've been cooking. Um, you don't wanna scrub a cast iron pan, you wanna kind of leave the residue on there and it seasons the pan. It's kind of like that with ballastol. It leaves this nice, cool, slick surface on everything. So we're gonna take all those parts. The recoil spring, I don't spray down. I might just give it a little wipe down. Um, it doesn't get very dirty usually anyway and you don't need to lubricate the recoil spring. So I will just wipe that down and put it to the side and that's pretty much done. I'm gonna put the frame to the side right now 
and we will deal with the slide. So what do I do with this? Again, I use my ballastol. Now you can see here, you've got the front of the slide and then you've got the rear of the slide. The rear of the slide has the firing pin, it has the extractor, it has little bits and pieces that you don't wanna get gummed up too badly. So when you're putting ballastol in here, you can see the locking grooves in the slide here. I'm just gonna spray the ballastol in this front section pretty liberally. Get it all over, even on the outside. There's carbon build up there. I'll let that sit for a little bit. On this part here, where there's all the little parts that I don't wanna get gummed up, I'm just gonna take a brush like this and I might just kinda of scrub a little bit. See if you can see this. And that'll loosen a lot of the carbon buildup that might be there. You could use a brass brush as well, but this is just a little nylon brush. Go here, back. And then I might wanna put a little bit of ballastol so I can get the face here. So I might just get a little spray of ballastol and give that a good scrubbing. That can get pretty dirty. You can see we're getting a bit of gunk on the brush here. And then what I might do to really finish this up is take a little ballastol and put it on a Q-tip and get into some of these harder to reach areas in the slide. Again, I just don't wanna to get too crazy with putting lube in here cleaner, whatever you're using. You can use whatever. I use Ballastol for the most part. You could use CLP. You could use any sort of ugh, solvent if you wish. I just think Ballastol usually does the trick if you haven't been shooting the gun too crazily. God, I'm almost out here. Come on, Ballastol. And you can use the Q-tip to really get into the rails here and the slide. You could even use, as a lot of you are pipe smokers because you watch this channel, you could even get some pipe cleaners. Those help. Again, just put a little ballastol on there. You can really get into these grooves with the pipe cleaners. And then if you have sort of a double-sided nylon brush, I might get in here into the rails. all the surfaces of the slide that might have some gunk building up in there. You really want to pay attention to the extractor too. You want me to make sure that extractor is free. And then what I do once I've done that is I might just take a clean patch. I've got some around here somewhere. Clean patch or two. And I will just shove that inside and kind of wipe out all the excess ballastol and oil that's in there. And sometimes it helps. You can use like dental picks or things like that too, but this is usually sufficient. Just use my narrower nylon brush and it'll get into all the nooks and crannies. And that is getting nice and clean. It's not gonna be absolutely spotless, but it's good enough for our purposes. And the outside, I've got so much ballastol and stuff all over my fingers already. And I might take a cloth and just give it a little dousing. And then I'll just rub the outside of this. Get any residue off. Again, I like leaving a little bit of a coating of ballastol. Nothing too heavy, but it certainly doesn't hurt to leave a nice slick layer of ballastol on all the metal surfaces, it'll protect them. I also usually keep this in like a silicone impregnated sock, gun sock, um, but a blued gun like this, a blued finish, it's not the most resilient thing in the world. So you can get corrosion if you've been handling the gun. It's just always a good idea to wipe it down and maybe have a little bit of a protective layer, silicone, something like that, or oil. So there we go. The slide is basically done. We will put this to the side now the frame we don't have to do too much to usually i might again take a patch or something where are all my patches 
and I might get into this part here of the frame. I don't really go into the magazine well much. Often I'll just be using a brush, a dry brush. This brush is not particularly dry anymore, but just give it a little rub down. See if there's anything that needs to become detached. There's usually not much going on down here though. And in here, yeah, I might just moisten a patch get inside again you're gonna see there's not gonna be very much residue almost nothing in there and maybe on the outside of the frame a little bit you can get into these slide cuts here again I'll just use a little nylon brush use it to get into those nooks and crannies and you can see there's a little bit of something on there let's turn this around or use a whole new one entirely Ah, it's fun to clean guns, isn't it? It's another one of those nice sort of contemplative sort of activities. A lot of people, I guess, view gun cleaning as a chore. I'm not really one of those people. I always have liked it. Of course, I kind of like cleaning in general, so maybe that makes me a bit weird. And I'm just going to wipe up any excess stuff that I might have dislodged with my brush. And we're going to be pretty much good there. Again, ballastol is fine on anything. We have wood grips here. Ballastol is good on leather, it's good on wood, it's good on metal. So nothing that you're touching with the ballastol on this weapon is going to have any problem with it. And again, I might just get a little layer of ballastol on this cloth and just rub everything down. All the exposed metal, the wood grips, the medallions, everything gets a little bit of a coating. There we go. The frame is done. We can put that aside. Now we have all these little bits and pieces to deal with. The barrel bushing, I just wiped down with a rag. It's been soaking in ballastol, so it's going to be pretty much clean, or at least the uh, any sort of carbon or anything that's been built up on it should be fairly loose now. And I might take a patch inside just to see. But it doesn't usually get too dirty typically. So that's fine. We have got our slide release. Just give that a rub down. Doesn't matter if it has a little ballastol on it. We've got our recoil guide rod. That's pretty much done. Now all that's left is the barrel. This has been soaking in the ballastol. I don't have, I usually use a snake even for handguns. I know a lot of people don't use snakes for handguns. Oh, wait a minute, I've got my recoil plug flew on the ground. Um, yeah, I guess I might as well wipe this down too. <laughs> now it's got crud all over it from being on the ground. Give it a little bit of a rub down. Maybe get a Q-tip inside there. And a little bit of crud, not much. Wipe it down. It really seems like the more you use the ballastol, the more coated and protected the metal pieces get. I like that. Okay, so we have the barrel. Now, like I was saying, I don't, I do like using snakes even for handguns. Um, some people will only use the snakes for rifles and things like that. It definitely makes that easier. But I don't actually have a 45. I just have a nine millimeter and like a 22 or 223, whatever. So I will be using, um, just a good old fashioned brush, bore brush, and then I've got a jag in 45. I don't always use the bore brush. Um, it's often not necessary, especially if you haven't been shooting that much and you're not shooting lead. Um, I'm shooting everything is uh, jacketed hollow, not jacketed hollow point. Well, I actually did shoot a few jacketed hollow points, but it's mostly full metal jacket. But if you wish, you can go in. just give it a couple passes but really I don't think it was that necessary this time but just in case your barrel is particularly dirty let me take a look through this yeah it's already looking pretty clean so then I'll just take a jag and throw it on the end of my cleaning rod 
get a couple patches nice fresh dry ones again always coming from the breech end you don't want to go from the crown of the barrel if you can help it sometimes with revolvers that can't be helped but with this since the barrel comes out it's quite simple so let's see how clean we are Ooh, that was a little dirtier than i thought wasn't it okay we'll flip those over get the clean side yoink all right i might want to put a couple more through there it's a little dirtier than i was expecting Here we go. Nice, now we're getting there. Do it one more time with the dry and then I might just lightly moisten a patch or two and pass it through. I'm not sure when I'll be shooting this gun again or firing this gun for those of you who are pedantic. All right, that's not bad at all to my mind. Um, let me just flip these guys again. And I'll just get a little bit of ballastol and pass this through. That'll protect the bore in case I don't fire it for a while. And once more for good measure. All right, I would call that good. Now the outside, I might give a little bit of a scrub to the locking uh lugs <laughs> what if i can't think right now um i might give a little uh god speaking is harder than you think might give a little rub down to the barrel link the chamber is always nice to make sure you keep that nice and clean scrub that out and you know just in general scrub the barrel down a little bit and then just give it a wipe down with a cloth a lot of times I use those blue shop towels for doing this, but I just happen to have these microfiber cloths hanging around. So I'm using those today. And that's pretty much the cleaning portion of this video. Now we're going to lubricate a little bit. So what do I do with the 1911? Unlike a Glock, I'm a little more liberal with the lubrication. Um, and I kind of, a lot of people are really married to whatever gun lube they like to use. I'm not really that that much. Sometimes I'll just use Ballastol. Sometimes I'll just add a bit of other kind of gun lube. I think this is a CLP that I have in this little container. Um, I have just this kind of generic ultra lube that I use sometimes. Sometimes I was using gun grease. This is a Tetra gun grease. Eh, still not sure what I think about this, but sometimes I'll use this on the slide, like in my Glocks and things like that. It tends to sort of stay where you put it, but it also kind of becomes separated a little bit in the tube. So you've really got to rub it around and sort of mix it together before you use it. I think this time I'm just going to use a little bit of this uh, ugh, CLP, Clean Lubricate Protect. And I will just put a little bit in the slide cutouts here. I will put a little bit here. You don't have to lube your hammer and everything every single time. Um, it doesn't hurt, obviously. You could put a little drop in there. By your hammer pin the trigger yeah i'm not going to bother with that right now so that's pretty much all i'm going to do with the frame with the actual barrel i think i will just put a little bit of ballastol on my fingers and just go all around the outside of the barrel like so and then i will put a little bit in the oops where am i looking for the slide actually i'm going to put a little bit in the locking grooves in the slide like so and you know i already put some in the slide cutouts on the frame but i'll put a couple drops in here too just for good measure certainly doesn't hurt and then it doesn't hurt as well to maybe get a little bit extra around the barrel where it's going to make contact with the bushing any place where you can see where you see a little bit of wear on this around the muzzle so a little bit of oil never hurt anybody and maybe a little bit here on the hood all right she's oiled up 
Now it's time for reassembly. You take the slide like so. You take the barrel. I like to put the link down actually. And you throw it inside. And clockwise goes in like so. Take the recoil spring and guide rod. Looks like this end actually. You can see there's little legs on this guide rod that shows you how it's supposed to interface. Go through like so. And then that will sit on the barrel like that. Got a recoil spring plug like so. Then insert it back onto the frame and you pull back to the same notch. Now you can see it more clearly right here. And you can see there's this little indent here that's going to come into play a little bit later. Now you're going to try to line this up with the hole in your barrel link. And it looks like we're lined up there already. So what you do, you place it in, make sure you're lined up. And I think I've got it there. There we go. So you want to be very careful as you're pushing this in, you're putting downward force and a little bit of upward force and you're pushing in this detent and you're seating it in there in that notch. You wanna be very careful not to just shove this in and then go across the frame. So you get it sort of set, you get it right near the detent, and then you push two ways. And there you go. And it locks in, you're fine. Now, we can put it on safe if you want, that'll lock the slide. Then you can take your recoil spring plug, shove it in, be careful. <laughs> Keep a hold of it, it could go flying across the room. And you rotate your barrel bushing, and there you go. Your Colt 1911, or any kind of 1911 really, is back together. Distribute that oil a little bit. Check functionality, safety, doesn't fire, take it off safe, fires. Sometimes you might want to just work the hammer around a little bit. Looks good to me. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You might want to take a cloth afterwards and just sort of wipe down some of the excess oil from the surface of the weapon and your hands as well. But again, I don't try to get too crazy with it. I want to keep a little bit of that oil on the surface for protection. So there you have it. That is a clean as a whistle Colt Mark IV Series 70 uh, 1911. This was made eh, about a year ago, so it's a pretty new gun. Hasn't been fired a hell of a lot. I've maybe put a thousand rounds through it so far. But now she's ready to go for the next range trip. So thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Stuff and Things. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things Cleaning a Colts Mark IV Series 70, 1911. See you later.